to the Azimio La Umoja are speaking in this regard. Let's just cross over live the worst and listen in. This parliament, because he is running the house as if he is a DJ at a disco matanga there in Matisi, that he is controlling the mic himself. He can shut off anybody's mic at any particular point in time. He interjects every time a member is making contributions. Every time it's like him who wants to debate. He forgets that he's not now an elected member of uh, parliament. He should allow debate to flow. And this is a problem when you have partisan people who are still uh, party leaders of their own political parties to run a national institution such as uh, uh, the National Assembly. So we want to condemn Speaker Wetangula and to tell him he's the biggest coward in this country. He is afraid of the people. You can see the sort of police deployment that is out there. That is essentially supposed to protect members of parliament from the public. I am not afraid of the members of the public. Why should you, members of parliament be afraid of members of the public? These are the, the, the people who elected us. And to add insult to injury, he is closing uh, galleries that are essentially supposed, if you read the constitution, parliamentary debate is supposed to be open to the public. And I'm not even speaking as a member of the public. I'm speaking as one of the members of parliament. How can I be denied access to the National Assembly to listen to debate and to execute my role as a returning officer of ODM to make sure that we, all, we have all our votes against this finance bill? Number two, before I let my colleagues speak, we are extremely proud as leaders in this country, as young leaders, of the young people who have taken to the streets to demonstrate their displeasure at how this government has treated us repeatedly over the years. We told them that if you close your ears to the people, they will slap those ears until they open. And that is what is happening here. So we want to encourage those young people. Fear not. This is your country. This is your country. And I hope this movement does not die here. Anybody who is afraid of those young people there has a good reason to be afraid of those people. In fact, this vote should not be taken here where there are police codons. Each of the 290 members of parliament should go back to their constituencies and vote from there so that we know the truth that you are a representative of the people. So we want to encourage them to continue and make sure they access parliament. If there is any help you need, including showing you where the back door to this building is, you let us know. We will help you so that you are able to access these characters like Wetangula and tell them that you are their bosses and they are not the bosses of the people of Kenya. I thank you and I want to welcome the Honorable Senator Osotsi to say something. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Uh, I want to ask Kenyans to take notice of the conduct of the Speaker of the National Assembly, Moses Wetangula. Moses Wetangula is running the National Assembly like a baraza in Kamukuyo market, where there is no appreciation of the fact that the Speaker must be impartial must be independent and must be fair. And we have this, seen this going on for some time. You have seen the speaker Wetangula putting on party colors and running around the country taking partisan political position. And now he has now decided that he will now do that kind of thing that he has been doing in public rallies in parliament denying us access to public guarantee. That is the lowest a speaker of the National Assembly has gone. Senators have a right to access every part of parliament. We have allowed members of the National Assembly to come under... Uh, that cautions against overburdening future generations with unnecessary bad debt. Honorable members, all things considered, my reading of the advisory from the Cabinet Secretary is that it constitutes a reminder to the House of its constitutional and statutory obligations. I do not view it as a directive in the manner argued by the minority leader. In the letter... Speaker, who is uh, not just a speaker, but a hearing of the Ruto government. The decision is making. He has made various decisions, like the decision in uh, the matter regarding Sabina Chegg. That decision was made 
outside the provisions of the standing orders and are outside the law. So we are calling upon Kenyans to uh, watch this speaker Wetangula and we are also asking members of parliament who are very objective to come up with a motion to impeach this speaker. Correct. Because this country cannot, we cannot allow parliament to be hijacked by state house. We cannot allow parliament to be hijacked by Kenya Kwanzaa. We are uh, very disappointed with the speaker Wetangula, who also happens to be a former speak, uh, member Senate. of the Senate. If we can treat senators this way, what is he going to treat Kenyans, whom is supposed to give objective uh, leadership in the Senate, in the, speak, in the National Assembly? So we are also supporting the young people who are outside there demonstrating, and we know that many, many other Kenyans are disappointed with this regime. The regime that is overtaxing us, and we do not know what they are doing with our taxes. We ask Kenyans to come out and demonstrate wherever they are. Thank you. First of all, let me say, we're ta ta -we. whatever that means. Ta -we. Ta -we. With Speaker Wetangula has clearly confirmed to us and many other Kenyans that the National Assembly is an extension of the executive. It is absolutely ludicrous, draconian, for a speaker who was a member of the Senate to deny senators an opportunity to be able to sit in the galleries to follow the proceedings. What Weta is forgetting is that power is transient. He's so drunk in power, he, you know, I'm sure today even his, th his uh, very thin skin will be melting because he cannot be able to handle the pressure. Why on earth would Speaker Wetangula deny senators, you know, who are elected? He's not elected, he was appointed. And then, you know, elected by the members. He's supposed to be a symbol of unity of the house. But when he decides to come up with his own laws, this is something really that we should worry about. I have mad respect, mad love for the Gen Z's, for what they're doing. We need intergenerational fairness. It is not right that this generation, which is led by Speaker Retangula, is continuing overburdening the future generations. So what the Gen Z's are doing out there, the Gen Alpha, they are trying to protect their children, something that Weta is not doing, you know? And I think it's about time that as Kenyans, we, need to, we now need to start changing the system of public participation. The real public participation is happening out in the streets, you know? If you go to Eldoret, mad respect for you. Today, you drop down the wheelbarrow from up the, the roof. It shows that this administration is dead, you know? So what we are saying is that there's more to come. You know, people used to think that Raila is the only one who will come out there. We told them. And now whatever we told them, we professed, we prophesized, it is happening. And it is going to be punitive. Finally, I think it is important for any leader, and particularly Weta, to realize that power is transient. He will not be a speaker of the National Assembly forever. We are just meeting with a former speaker, who is now the Attorney General. You know, people come and go. People come and go. You will not be a speaker forever. So even if you've turned parliament into a military compound by making sure that uh, you restrict access into parliament, I can tell you this. The way you are extending parliament to become an extension of the executive, you are trying to kill devolution. You are trying to kill democracy in this country. We, as young leaders as well, we will not succumb to your stupid threats. We will not succumb to your illiteracy. Because this, there's nothing I can define this. You know? I mean, I agree with Sifuna. The guy is acting as if he's uh, uh, not only a chairman of, uh, non, you know, of uh, hooligans, but he's acting as if he's a DJ in a Matanga. Seriously. I want to remind him what I told him in the Senate. That a man with one cow can never be a chairman of a kettle dip. There is no way he is going to be a leader in this country going forward. The Gen Z's have said no, and we have also said no.
Asante. Mbona maswali? Iko. Anza swali. Now that you've been denied access to the public gallery, what is the next move considering that you're supposed to mobilize your members? Now, uh, first of all, let me say that uh, You know, there, there are various ways of uh, participating in this. Uh, I left my house, uh, respecting the rules of the house, put on a suit and a tie, uh, hoping that as an elected member I can follow these proceedings here. But now that we've been denied access, I think I'm going to take off this suit and join the young people in the streets. Because I think this is the only language that this government understands. At this particular moment in time, really, and Mimi ni kama wao tu. Eh hey, wao hawezi ingia bunge, mimi siwezi ingia bunge kwa sababu ya weta. So afadhali twende huko nje tukapigie tu, tu kelele huko nje. Kuna swali lingine? Yeah, yeah. What, what about the a group of traitors among you? Those ones who voted support. The consequences... Let me just say this that the High Court has handed us as political leaders a very solid weapon after declaring sections uh, relating to the recall of members of parliament unconstitutional. Because the previous parliament had made it impossible for you to recall members of parliament. I want to assure you that after this vote, we are going to try that new provision of the law on recalling members of parliament who do not follow what the public is saying, the people who elected them are saying, and what their political parties are saying. Because these people, they have been thinking <coughs> that they are very clever. Every time political parties like ODM institute uh, legal uh, proceedings or disciplinary proceedings, they run to court and obtain court orders. There are members of the National Assembly who are surviving here by virtue of uh, court orders. Because we as political parties had already kicked them out after what they did with the finance bill of 2023. I am telling you now, after the decision by the High Court, making it easier for us to recall members of parliament, we are going to pick two. And I can already see their names. We are just going to pick two of those people and demonstrate to them that they are not the bosses of the people, but the people are their bosses. Who are these two members? You know them. You know them. <laughs> Honorable Angela, I encourage you that yesterday when you spoke, the house listened to you.